that's kind of the easiest way to put the sort of kind of R&D, sort of science area where I work. And you have a problem and you're trying to figure out what, what caused that problem or what might solve that problem. And it's really kind of picking apart the details and I kind of think of it as, you know, you're solving little mysteries. <laughs> I wanted to be kind of learning new things and doing new things all the time. I try to figure out if we can do things differently the next time or do them better. You know, one of the reasons that I came to UT for my graduate school was because it was so close to Oak Ridge National Laboratory and I knew that their nuclear engineering department had a good working relationship. I wanted to be a part of that. I was always given a lot of flexibility by both my technical mentor and by, by my manager to kind of propose new ideas and, and kind of to, to go with things and to take maybe an idea I had and expand on it and to expand my knowledge and take you know, training courses that might be a little outside my current field of expertise. Um, and so I always felt like there would be a lot of opportunity for me here. And so, you know, our big challenges are how can we produce those isotopes more effectively? And if we can make more of those isotopes, if we can make them cheaper, if we can make them faster, then more people can be treated with those isotopes. More people can do their research if we can provide those isotopes for them at a lower cost, then they can do their projects more effectively. Getting to you know, see the impact that some of our research has on the big picture, on the overall world, um, you know, that, that's important. That kind of helps you feel connected to the world. <laughs> I think everybody has that drive, no matter what you do, no matter what field you're in.